Hi, my name is David Self. This is my standard five case study presentation for module 8B for EDL 850. I want to start out first by just giving you an idea of basically uh, the order of things that I'll present. First of all, I'm going to go through the problem identification, the plan of action, resolving issues, debriefing, and then lastly, standard five. Category one asked is the problem identification and analysis, and it asked the question, what do I know? Um, reading through the case study, I decided to start out by just listing what I know about the major components of this case study, starting with Roosevelt High School. Um, RHS is located in an affluent, highly populated area. Uh, the students come from upper class families with high priced homes. It describes them uh, being very nice. Um, the students' parents are professionals in their business and career fields, um, and therefore the students have access to the latest advances in technological equipment. Moving on with the what do I know, I'm going to start with Dr. Stephen Forbes. Uh, Dr. Forbes has been the principal at uh, Roosevelt for the past nine years. He was named principal of the year two years ago. Dr. Forbes is respected by the parents and his staff, and he is focused and proud of the school's reputation. He wants to maintain that. And he only hires highly qualified, educated teachers. Moving on to uh, our third component of, the, uh, of this case study is Miss Cindy Walker. Uh, she is a second year teacher. Miss Walker is highly educated, currently holding a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and even one year of postgraduate work. Uh, continuing on Ms. Walker, um, she's older than the average beginning teacher. She is currently single, and she maintains a very structured, rigorous learning environment in her classroom. She teaches very high-level learning students. Many of them aspire to become the valedictorian or salutatorian of their graduating class. Her lessons have produced high levels of stress for her students. Um, Ms. Walker has received numerous complaints. Um, about her teaching. Actually, Dr. Forbes has received them about Ms. Walker, and he's even intervened and offered some strategies to help her adapt and change, yet uh, the complaints have continued. Um, on the weekend, um, going out of town one weekend, she returned and found that um, she had received an email from an anonymous sender and an anonymous email address. The message directed her to a website uh, for a personal message, and it contained some very highly suggestive comments. It talked about her personal life and attacked her teaching style. The message contained some vulgar language, so it was pretty personal to her, and a sentence that said, quote, who wants to see Miss Walker disappear, end quote. The statement was perceived by as a physical threat by Miss Walker. The reaction that Miss Walker had, um, she she was very upset. She called Mr. Uh, Dr. Forbes immediately, reporting the email, um, and she also said it contained a death threat. Those were her exact words. Said they want me. Someone wants to kill me, and uh, she gives the website information to Dr. Forbes upon his request. Dr. Forbes believes that it only to be a prank, and he asked about possible disgruntled students and recent incidents from the school. Immediately, uh, Ms. Walker identifies a student by the name of Randy Franks. Uh, she says it's a student who makes many snide remarks behind her back. She also says the comment that she's never been able to prove it, but she, she knows it was him. And Randy is always a student who's providing te technology help uh, to other students in his classes. Dr. Forbes um, agrees that he's going to print off the email and all the uh, information, and he plans to talk to Randy along with Ms. Walker when school resumes. Dr. Forbes states that he will seek help from the district tech department to determine the source of email if it's possible. So moving on into Category 1, the next question is, what do I need to know about this case study? What, what would I like to know more about? And first of all, I'd say that I'd like, I mean, obviously, the obvious question is, who sent the email and from what location was it sent? Um, was it, what was the intention of the email? Was it simply to just frighten her, scare her? Um, I think when I ask that question, it's I think of it more as 
what was the really that that one that one word uh, that one sentence? Who wants to see Miss Walker disappear? And was it a criminal threat in nature? Does it meet the definitions in the to, in the legality of, of a criminal threat? And if so, it possibly um, could involve police involvement or getting the school resource officer looking into this as well. And I'd also like to know what is the uh, what I need to know is the what is the school's bullying policy? Moving on in category one to identifying the problem, um, there's several aspects of this. So I'll start with Ms. Walker. Uh, Ms. Walker is an unpopular teacher. That's one of the prob that is part of this problem. She's generated a lot of complaints. Uh, she does not promote a positive learning environment, and so far she's been unwilling to change. There's also a, kind of an initial underreaction on the principal's part. He, his immediate thing reaction was that he said it's only a prank. He believed it was only a prank. Um, later on, he does acknowledge that the email and the matter need additional attention and looking into. There may also be a problem at the school with cyberbullying um, going on. Um, is, is there a policy in place for this? Is it mandatory that all staff and students receive the training? And does the school keep files on who has received the training, or is there documentation that they've received? Category two, uh, proposed plan of action for strategies and implementation. First of all, I believe that Dr. Forbes and Ms. Walker should meet again in person and go over the entire incident one more time. They need to review the email and everything that was in it. Uh, Dr. Forbes should also meet with the district. He should, he should plan on meeting with the district technology personnel to determine the source of that email, whether who the sender was and what computer it came from, if possible. Dr. Forbes should also meet and interview any students who may be possible suspects. He should try to determine the intent of the message, I think is the most important thing. Dr. Forbes should inform the students of the potential consequence of their actions. Maybe try to, if, you know, if he feels that he's talking to the right person, attempt to get that confession or more information as to who possibly sent the email. Dr. Forbes should also schedule meetings with parents of the possible suspects. Um, he needs to involve law enforcement if it's determined to be a criminal act. Dr. Forbes should also meet with other administration and disciplinary uh, officials to determine exactly what policy and what rules were broken within the school um, to discuss the dis disciplinary action as a result. Category three, uh, resolving issues uh, to promote the success of all students. Starting with Ms. Walker again, Dr. Forbes should provide additional professional development training for Ms. Walker while, while maintaining a professional, positive relationship with her. Um, this will just help continuing to assist her to become a better teacher, um, working on things like classroom management, building relationships with um, students and parents, working on her interpersonal communication, the way she talks and addresses things with her students and parents. Um, maybe even look at assigning a mentor teacher with more experience to help her along. He should also continue to schedule follow-up meetings on a regular basis and conduct classroom observations, both unannounced and announced. Dr. Forbes should also uh, involve the school community. He needs to review the cyber cyberbullying and the bullying policy with student body and staff. Uh, he should also plan on hosting maybe an open meeting to the public and to parents and anyone that's a stakeholder with the school to go over this recent issue. The meeting should be focused on prevention and awareness and also discuss the potential consequences of cyberbullying and bullying, um, not only from the school's consequence standpoint, but also the legal um, application this could have, but also for the victim and the perpetrator. There's a lot of consequences for the victim that maybe aren't thought of initially. In Category 4, debriefing and reflection, uh, what was I thinking, feeling, and valuing as I went through this case study? Uh, initially, my thoughts after I read through it was that Dr. Forbes, did he really underreact to the situation or was he just being cautious? Uh, what kind of influence does the community and his reputation have on his actions? I, I think about a political standpoint um, that he wants to re maintain a relation, uh, uh, excuse me, a reputation for the school and for himself. But after reading over it several times, I kind of concluded that. Um, after his initial reaction, he did handle the situation properly, especially based on the information he had at that moment. 
continue with my thoughts, feelings, and, and things I was thinking about. I, I want to know, was this really a credible, was it a credible threat? Uh, did it meet the definitions of criminal threat? Um, and I think it would probably be difficult to prove the email, the sender's intentions. It's going to come down to a he said, she said thing. They're going to say, well, it was just supposed to be a prank and, and so forth. I think that's probably one of the biggest things I was thinking your whole time. Um, will the district uh, technology team be able to determine the source of the email? And what can be done to improve Ms. Walker's situation moving forward from this incident? Uh, the unresolved issues I have with this case study, uh, will Ms. Walker adapt and will she change her strategies and teaching style and management style to, to build a better relationship? Um, what can be done to ensure that students, parents, and other members of the school community buy into the, new, the school's bullying policy? And was there ever really a physical threat to Ms. Walker? I know initially she had a, a reaction that she felt scared and threatened, but again, um, we've got to find the intent and who was behind the, the email. Category 5, uh, looking at Standard 5, Component 1, um, I demonstrated a sense of integrity and ethical behavior um, as an administrator by first checking that all students and staff were trained in the school's bullying policy. Uh, next, I made a decision to check that the school has kept a record of all students, documented um, staff and students who were trained in the policy. And third, as a school administrator, I would want to make sure all stakeholders were aware of the policy by holding open meetings to the parents and to the public. Uh, the goal of these meetings would be to make, uh, to, to make parents aware and the community aware and to encourage the monitoring of students' online and social uh, website activities. Component two, as an administrator, I believe I treated pe people fairly, equitably, and with dignity and respect. Uh, my first action in this in this regard was that I immediately didn't jump to a conclusion that there was a, a, a huge death threat made um, when presented with the incident. Secondly, I waited to investigate the incident in person rather than over the phone the night that it initially happened. Um, and I wanted to involve as many personnel as I could as they were needed. Uh, the personnel could include the victim, obviously, the potential suspects technology experts, law enforcement, and parents and staff, if, if I believed, if they were needed in this. And third, by following this procedure, um, I ensure that no one is falsely accused of any violations, and also that Ms. Walker is treated fairly and the incident is fully investigated. In component three, as an administrator, I demonstrated a personal and professional code of ethics by first investigating all aspects of the incident. Uh, a second example of displaying this trait was, you know, looking after Ms. Walker's future as a teacher, um, improving her status, um, her classroom skills, maybe assigning a mentor to her in the professional development classes. My third example of following this directive can be seen in my decision to reteach and review the school's bullying program to all students and staff. This concludes my presentation on Standard 5 case study for EDL 850. Thank you.